السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين So today we're examining if Islam is oppressive to women or not And again I like to always ask where does this idea come from and where does the idea of oppression come from Is it from the fact that there are different rulings for men than there are for women in Islam and does that constitute oppression so for example, and you hear this complaint from many people, and sometimes even from amongst Muslims. Why is it that a man, a Muslim man, can marry four women, but a Muslim woman is not allowed to marry four men? And they make it look as if this is oppression, right? And then they ask you things like, why is it that the men pray in the front in the masjid and the women pray in the back? And again, they make it sound as if it's oppression, but if you think carefully about it, is it oppression? And then all sorts of other questions, especially regarding the dress code. Why is it that the women have to cover? and the man does not have to cover. And so from seeing different rulings for men and women, they conclude that perhaps Islam is oppressive to women. But the truth is, that is not the case. You know, to recognize the difference between two species or two objects or two things or two people is actually the essence of justice. For example, what they say is something very nice saying. They say that to, to treat two different things as equal is a form of injustice. One more time. To treat two very different things as equal is itself a form of injustice. Let me give you a simple example. Suppose, let's say I work at a warehouse and I have these huge 100 kilogram or let's say 60 kilogram bags and I drop them to these men, these big strong men, they take them. And I drop them from up top and these men catch them and they go on. Then a small woman, she is about, you know, less than five feet tall, very frail, small. She comes and she stands under me, she says, okay, throw me one also. 60 kilos, I'm throwing it from a distance. And I think, you know what? I'm going to treat everyone as equal. I'm going to treat these big men equal to the small woman. And I drop it on her and I break her body. Is that fair? It's not fair. So what is fair is to recognize differences between people, objects, things, situations, and then treat them based on these differences. That is fair. Because I don't think anyone argues that in Islam, a woman is a living soul not half a human being like some other you know, beliefs in some other areas where the woman was half a, a, a human being and the man was a full human being. No, in Islam, the woman is a human and the male is a human. But because there are differences between the two, physiological differences, psychological differences, Islam made way and made an allowance for those, those differences and those changes. And that is the essence of being fair and being just. So now when you come to examine every one of the accusations against Islam being oppressive to women, what we really have is really, uh, we have a system or a part of the world that had, that's gone overboard when it comes to the woman. So if you have one group that is so far to the left, even if you're in the middle and you're moderate, you will look like you're so far to the right. And that's exactly what's happening today. So for example, the woman has been in some, some countries given so many rights that Allah didn't give her these rights. So where did she get them from? In Islam, we have it in a more balanced way. So you examine every accusation carefully and you start to see that there is no injustice whatsoever. So why is it that a man can marry for and a woman cannot marry for? What kind of question is this? Did you consider this question for a minute? Why on earth would a woman marry four men and then cook for four men and clean for four men and have children for four men and complain to four men? Okay, leave the complaining part. The point is it doesn't make any sense. Why on earth would that be the situation? Likewise, people say, why do the men pray in the front of the mosque? and the women in the back of the mosque. What, what did you want? Have you seen the movements in Salah, what it looks like when we go down for ruku'a, prostration, and sujood, bowing, all these things? Is it appropriate for women to be in front of the men? I think there will be no focus in the men's section, that's for sure. So, but wait a minute, before we discuss that even, who put this stipulation and who put this condition and who made this rule that the ones in the front are superior and if you're in the back, you're inferior? I want to meet this person. Who is this person that put it in our head that if you're in the back, you're somehow oppressed? If you're in the back, you're inferior. Who put this idea? And the problem is people just run with it without questioning it. So the people come up to you angrily. Why is it the woman praying in the back? Okay, what's wrong with the back? Is there any issue with the back? 
But it makes more sense for them to pray in the back. Why on earth would they pray in front of the men and then go down for bowing and prostration in front of the men with the men behind them? It is not appropriate and that is not what the mosque is for. It's a place of worship. It's a place of purity and purity of intention as well. But people, they don't consider and they don't think carefully before they ask this question. So not every question is worth being asked and not every question is worth an answer sometimes. Then come other issues, the issue of hijab. So why is it that the woman is covered? Okay, one more time. I want to meet this guy who put it in our head that if you're covered, you're oppressed. And by the way, if you're covered, being, I mean, if you're oppressed because you're covered, that would mean the opposite is also true. That means the less you're covered, the more liberated you are. Which means that there are very, very, very few people in the world who are truly liberated. You know what I'm talking about, right? Taban, we don't really make this argument, but it's, a, it's, it's the extension of this argument. If you're saying covering means oppression, that means uncovering means liberation. That means if someone comes to you and they're st still wearing clothes, you're like, well, you're not fully liberated. Why don't you liberate yourself 100%? Like I said, don't really use this argument. But this is a true story. One time there was a speaker. He's giving a lecture, Islamic lecture. And uh, there were Muslims on one side, men on one side, women on the other side. And the women were properly clothed in hijab and everything. So a non-Muslim woman comes in angrily pointing at the Muslim woman. Why are they covered like that? She's angry. Why are they covered? Meaning, she's trying to say they're oppressed. That's why they're covered. First of all, I mean, this was, this was in America. And for the most part, in most countries, a woman puts on hijab because she wants to put on hijab. No one can force you, especially if you live in the West. Who's going to force a woman to put on hijab? But what happens is, she's angrily pointing to the woman. Why are they covered like that? And she said, uh, the, the speaker then answers her very nicely. He says, well, you were born without clothes. Why are you wearing clothes now? And the woman looked at him. She said, Modesty, because of modesty, that's why I wear clothes. He said, okay, well then modesty, here we have more modesty. There's the argument, meaning if you are modest, putting on clothing is modesty, that means the more I cover my body, the more modest it is. And the less I uncover, the less modest I am, not the more liberated I am. So these are the arguments, and this makes a lot of sense. Okay, but here's the question. Why is it that... When someone sees, let's say someone in the West sees a Muslim woman wearing hijab, he thinks oppression. He sees her as she's walking by, she's oppressed. But then they see a nun wearing almost the same thing, hijab and covering and everything. They don't feel that she's oppressed. They don't think of, of oppression. And then they see an Orthodox Jewish woman, and she's walking by, her hair is covered, everything's covered, wearing long sleeves, long dress. And no one says, okay, well, she's oppressed. Why does this only show up when it comes to the woman? Obviously because of the, of the narrative and all the, the stories and the ideas that were put in people's heads that Islam oppresses women and so on. And it's been put in people's heads so much that even sometimes Muslim women believe it. But what we're telling them is question these things. If someone tells you you're oppressed because you're covered, well that would mean then uncovering makes you liberated. But still I see most people in the, in the world are wearing clothing, so why aren't they fully liberated? Yeah, you tell me I'm oppressed because I pray in the back. So who put this rule that the back is oppressed? I know maybe in America we have, you know, the back of the bus was for oppression. But in the masjid, it's honoring and respecting the woman. We don't make them sexual objects. So then they just come in, in front of men and dance and bow and, and just, you know, show their, their, their body and so on and so forth. This is respect and honor for them. So, but like I said, when someone is far to the left, even if you're moderate, you seem to be far to the right. But the truth is, Islam is the moderate. It is in the middle and in, it is, alhamdulillah, the truth. So with that being said then, anytime someone says, does Islam oppress women? Why are these millions of women then Muslim then? Especially those who, who are in the West. Why do they remain Muslim? If, the, if it's oppression, the minute you go to America, Canada, UK, Australia, and immediately leave Islam and leave hijab, but they insist upon Islam and they call people to Islam. What does that tell you? It tells you they're not oppressed. So anytime someone questions Islam, you question the question. Why do you think they're oppressed? And who put the standard? So that's our argument then. So thank you for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.